Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry webcast. Tonight, the focus is KSP problems, particularly KSP problems where we're trying to predict whether or not a precipitate will form. These are problems that actually show up on the AP Chemistry exam, and AP Chem students really need to be good at solving them. They're pretty easy if you practice. However, before we go on, I do need to say, if you haven't worked through KSP problems and know how to write KSP expressions, and how to work through those, you really should go back and look at my KSP webcast and then come back to this one. So what I'd like to accomplish in this webcast is to discuss saturated solutions, what it means to be a saturated solution for slightly soluble salts, and then talk about Q versus K and how we can use that to predict what's going to happen, right? So we're drawing in some of our knowledge of equilibrium in order to do these problems. And then we're going to go through a practice problem and use KSP data and use all the information that we need to solve a sample problem to predict whether a precipitate will form if two solutions are being mixed. So let's start by talking about slightly soluble salts. Back in your first year course or earlier in AP Chem, you probably talked about your solubility rules, how certain compounds don't dissolve to a great extent in water, right? They might have very, very low solubility, but it's never zero. One example of a slightly soluble salt is silver chloride which doesn't dissolve well in water. I can only get tiny, tiny amounts of silver chloride to dissolve, right? So when we talk about dissolving solid silver chloride, I might make a saturated solution where I've dissolved as much of this as I can. Now, when silver chloride dissolves, it actually dissociates into ions, silver ions and chloride ions in a one-to-one -one ratio. So what I'm trying to show in this picture model is a representation of a saturated solution where I've I'm trying to show that I've dissolved as much as I can in this particular model. I'm not being quantitative, just more descriptive, All right? So it will establish an equilibrium between the solid salt. I may have an undissolved, I may have a layer of undissolved solid on the bottom of the beaker, All right, where the solid silver chloride would be the reactant and then it dissociates to form ions. And I can only get tiny amounts of these ions to go into solution. Now it is an equilibrium and we can write an equilibrium constant for this. And this equilibrium constant is called the solubility product constant, or the KSP. All right, so you need to be able to write KSP expressions for these equations. You need to be able to write them. All right, and there's our KSP value for silver chloride. They're in a one-to-one -one ratio. The exponents are one. Now, the KSP for silver chloride has been measured, and it's really tiny, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. I can't get a lot of these ions in solution. My saturated solution has very low molarities for both ions, as it turns out. Okay, so the situation that we really want to deal with is if I mix two solutions, will a precipitate form? So let's say I have a solution of silver nitrate and, and I mix it with a solution of sodium chloride. Now, a double displacement reaction could occur, um, but the nitrate is a spectator and the sodium ions are spectator ions. What we're really curious is, will the precipitate of silver chloride form? That's the precipitate that would form, but I have to meet a threshold. And if I'm not above that threshold as defined by the value of the KSP, I'm not going to get a precipitate. So how does this work? We need to be able to reason through this, all right? So let's say I mix my two solutions together, and I'm just looking at the ions that are involved, silver ions and chloride ions. And my situation is that when I mix these guys, I ended up with concentrations of silver ions and chloride ions, that when, are, when they're multiplied together, it's a higher value than the equilibrium constant. And I have more ions in solution than I can have. In other words, my ion product, or my Q, is greater than the equilibrium constant. Q is greater than K. I've got too many ions in solution, which means I've got too many products. And so in order to establish the equilibrium, the system has to proceed to the left. I need to get some reactants. What are the reactants? Solid silver chloride. So if Q is too big, if my, my product of ion concentrations is too large a value, I'm going to make a precipitate until the concentrations equal what I would have at equilibrium. If I mix my solutions together, and it turns out that I have fewer ions present than in a saturated solution. In principle, I could actually dissolve more ions. So my ion product is less than my equilibrium constant. Q is less than K. The reaction could proceed to the right to establish the equilibrium. I've got as much dissolved as I can, all right? 
um, I should say, I have dissolved as many ions as I have. I could, in principle, dissolve a few more if I had any. All right, but in that situation, I'm not going to make precipitate. All right, so this leads us to being ready to actually do the KSP problems that we need to be able to solve. Here's our strategy. If if I want to know, will mixing two solutions result in a precipitate? There are several steps we need to go through. If you're new to these kinds of problems, you might even want to consider writing down the list because it might be helpful to you. The first thing you need is a balanced equation. What's the precipitate that you're expected to do? You can do it from the uh, double displacement reaction, your solubility rules. If you've been given a KSP for a particular compound, that's probably the one you want. And you need to write a balanced equation for that stuff dissolving in water. And then you need to write a KSP expression based on your balanced equation. All right. The next thing we need to do is calculate the concentrations of the ions that are part of the precipitate we're trying to figure out if it will form or not. All right. We are going to assume that the volumes are additive. All right. And in order to do these calculations, we're going to use M1V1 equals M2V2. And then once we have those concentrations, we can calculate QSP. We're going to take those concentrations and substitute them into the KSP expression, but we're going to call it Q, the reaction quotient, because we don't know what's going on yet. And then we're going to compare our value of Q to the given value for K. If Q is bigger than K, I'll get a precipitate until Q and K are equal. If Q is less than K or equal to K, nothing's going to happen. No precipitate will form. And this is how we work through these problems. So let's do one. All right, a very typical problem of this type. Suppose 100 mils of 0.020 molar sodium chloride are added to 50 mils of 0.0100 molar silver nitrate. Will a precipitate form? All right, we're going to assume that the volumes are additive. The problem did tell us this here. Um, sometimes they won't, but you do need to know what that final volume is in order to do these problems successfully. And we're also given the KSP of eight silver chloride, which we knew from before, but that's okay. So first step, always a balanced equation. Silver chloride, the reactant dissociating to form ions. We had done this way back in the beginning of the webcast, you know, a whole seven minutes ago. Um, but it's worth writing out. I want to state, don't skip these steps. The next thing we need is our equilibrium constant, right? Our KSP expression, we were given the value. But you really don't want to skip these steps because they're not always, the ions aren't always going to combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. You know, if there was a subscript in the formula for the solid, those are coefficients in the balanced equation, which become exponents in the KSP expression, and you're going to miss all of that if you skip steps. It's a big risk. Don't do it. All right. The next thing we need to do is calculate our concentrations of the ions. Now, we really don't care about the sodium ion. It's a spectator. All right. The chloride ion we care about because it's part of the precipitate that may or may not form. So we need to calculate the concentration of the chloride ions the moment the solutions meet, but in principle before they've had a chance to react. So the total volume of the solution would be 150 milliliters. We're going to use M1V1 equals M2V2. All right, so we can substitute that in. All right, we're solving for the chloride ion concentration with the new volume of 150 mils. We can rearrange and substitute. We get a chloride ion concentration of 0.0133 molar. Great, that makes sense. My volume went up, my molarity should go down. We need to do the same kind of thing for the silver ion concentration. Again, the total volume of the two solutions coming together is 150 mils. M1V1 equals M2V2, such a handy equation. Substitute that in, rearrange, I get a silver ion concentration of 3.33 times 10 to the minus third molar. Okay, great. Now we're ready to really do the KSP part. All right. So we're going to substitute the values for the silver ion concentration and the chloride ion concentration into our KSP expression, but we're going to call it Q because we don't know if we're at equilibrium or not. So we just found those values on the previous slides, and I just wrote them down again because I couldn't remember them otherwise. All right, so we're going to substitute those into our QSP expression and get a number, and I get a value for QSP of 4.43 times 10 to the minus fifth. Great. We're not done yet. We have one thing left to do. We need to compare Q to K. How does Q compare to K? All right. Q is greater than K. 10 to the minus fifth is much larger than 10 to the minus 10. Q is greater than K, which means a precipitate will form. I've got too many ions in solution. I'm going to make some reactants. I'm going to make that silver chloride, and it's going to deposit on the bottom. 
you do need to make sure you explicitly compare Q versus K. You need to write Q is greater than K, precipitate will form, or Q is less than K, no precipitate. You need to explicitly state that that's expected. These problems are really very manageable and very doable. If you follow all the steps and leave everything, you know, put everything in that you need to, um, you could do very well. So it's time to go out and practice. There are lots of sources of these problems. Go find them. Great. Have a wonderful night.